Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to season two of the Really Useful Podcast. I'm your host, Bonnie, also known as OTPOT7, and I'm here with my co-host. So go ahead and easel, everybody. Welcome to season two of the Really Useful Podcast. Man, it's been a while, hasn't it? It has. It has been, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, technically in terms of uh, recording, um, it has been a long while. I think the last time that, um, uh, I think the last time we recorded for the uh, really useful podcast was somewhere back in November, if I remember correctly. At the end of November, we yes. we finished recording this the first season, and yes. man, that first season was a lot of fun to do, and you guys seemed to like it. So we thought, hey, fuck it, let's go back and do season two. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, yes, because like, uh, yes, because like we, because uh, like we said, we all dream about ranting about children's books all day long. So. <laughs> Yeah, I have no doubt that we're still probably going to rant on a couple of uh, these books here and there. But they, uh, but thankfully for the first book of the uh, really useful podcast for season two, we have a book that's actually decent. It actually doesn't suck. So, uh, so, pro- so probably no rant today for this book, which is actually a good thing. Because uh, let's be honest, man, some fun and all. But at the same time, praises are actually not all that bad either. But uh, yes. So, so you guys seem to like the first season a lot. And uh, we'll be honest, we definitely had a lot of fun filming season one, especially the final episode. That we, final episode was a joy to film. We did. Uh, we did. We definitely had a lot of fun. Because uh, like I said, if we weren't too sure this project was going to do well at all to begin with. Because uh, usually when we do reviews and everything like this, we always tend to do them script and everything. And so basically, the really useful podcast was the first time where, like, uh, this was our first time we uh, we were doing stuff non-scripted. It was basically our own live performance and everything, going off off the top of our heads and everything. And surpri- uh, and uh, surprisingly, like, you know, we bounced off of each other really well when it came to, like, giving our thoughts on each of the books and each of the stories to basically uh, help us form our own opinions and our own ratings as, uh, 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 as basically the series went on and such. So I'm, de- uh, so, I'm definitely looking- uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to doing this again with the next eight books that we have. Uh, that basically we have in store for uh, season two and everything. Yeah, season two is definitely going to be a fun season. Uh, it's we got eight books to cover this season, and most of them are pretty damn great. Uh, from from what I remember from the top of my memory. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, pretty, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much same here. Like uh, for the lineup that we got and everything. Um, so far, if I had to take a guess, I think there's only one book, at least in terms of me and such. In terms of me, I think there's only one book that might be weak out of the eight. Uh, but uh, but even so, when we get to that book, I don't consider that book to be uh, to be all terrible or anything like that. I just uh, uh, I just think that like you know, compared to the other books and everything, it definitely you know, uh, to me it doesn't really hold up as well as the other eight. Definitely at the same time, the stories that the book does offer and everything still uh, as, uh, are still good stories to this day and everything. I agree. I agree. So uh, before we get started, let's look up, let's look back on, on season one and and if you guys remember uh, at the at the very end of the tier list that we did, we I believe we gave season one a C. Pretty uh, pretty much yes, because uh, yes, if you look back at the tier list, only two books basically uh, got uh, or at least to me, I mean, uh, I think I only gave like one book an S. I think I gave. Um, one or, uh, I think I gave one or two books in A. Three. There were three at C. Uh, there were three at C. One in S. One in A. No Bs. Uh, three Cs. No Ds, as far as I'm aware. And and I believe. I, I actually no. There was one D. I gave one book a D, and that was Gordon the Big Engine. Yes. And and there was two and Fs. The, and and yeah, the only uh, actually there was like two Fs I gave. The the ones with the two Fs are James the Red Engine and Troublesome Engines. And as for me, I gave two books in S. Uh, one book in A, one in B. Uh, I don't recall giving it giving uh, one a C. I, I think it was Thomas's Christmas party, but I might be wrong. I think you uh, might be right on that. Um, I'm pretty, uh, I'm, pretty, uh, I'm, pretty uh, I'm pretty sure, like you know, some of our fans will definitely yeah, uh, some be, of our uh, fans, yeah, the fans are the best in the world. Yeah, probably correct us out in the comments and such. Yeah, the fans, the fans that have the best memory in the world, you can correct us in the comments. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty, mu- uh, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Either you have the best memory, or you just have no life. <laughs> And I think, yeah, and I gave three Fs, and actually the worst F was James the Red Engine. I forgot to say at the very end of that video, uh, James the Red Engine to me is still the worst book on season one as we speak. 
Yes, and it's probably gonna stay that way for probably a little long while. But uh, but we shall see once we get to like uh, once we uh, once we do like part two of the tier list after we get done with the final book for season two. Yes. So today's episode and the first episode of season two, we're gonna be taking a look at the book at a book that is based on a very a pretty much underrated character that ha that has been getting getting a lot of fans recently. And pretty of course, much. I'm talking about Edward the Blue Engine, the very first character created for the Railway series. Pretty much, and he gets another book all to himself. And, uh, and actually, yeah, it is kind of uh, it is kind of fitting because basically, the first episode of the first season, you know, fo uh, focusing on Edward for the first two stories, and now and now at the start of the second season, we get a book all dedicated to Edward, sort of. Yeah, sort of. Uh, we'll get we'll, we'll explain that when we get to the stories. Um, unfortunately, I cannot find that much valuable information as to the backstory behind this book but i will but i will say that uh if, if i did a couple research and in my and if the research is correct this was the final book wilbur audrey wrote uh, on hand books written afterwards were written on a typewriter wait, uh, uh, wait uh, which will probably be a good thing for his hand and everything so it's probably, uh, so it's probably a good thing he probably decided to move on for a typewriter and and actually, this book this book came out a year after the disastrous, uh, sad story of Henry. Uh, uh, but, uh, basically, yeah, yeah, the live broadcast of like uh, the sad story of Henry, where like uh, the BBC and believe it or not, tried to like adapt. Not, the, uh, we finally we finally have one picture, one picture of how the models looked like. We did. Uh, ba uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, ba uh, yeah. Basically, to show us uh, for whatever number, it's basically. Uh, for the models between uh, Thomas II or Percy and such, no, uh, the only one actually, that did not have a model no, yet was uh, Toby. No. I believe. Uh, those model, the models you're referring to, were actually made as a reference for the illustrators. Those ones you're talking about were made as reference for the illustrators. Oh, interesting. Yes. Uh, the, the, there was only one picture that surfaced from the BBC uh, live broadcast, and it's actually the model of James. Oh. That was the only picture we have so far. We only have newspaper clippings, but that's the only picture we have of, of the models. Yeah, so so yeah, you can tell that a lot of information has surfaced ever since we get we got done with season one. Pretty much, and it's pre uh, I'm, pre uh, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty sure by the time we get done with the series overall, we'll probably get even more information and everything. Oh yes, and we got some more information on Reginald Payne, like you know, we we found out what was his real name and everything like that. So uh, let's see if I don't if I let me see if I have everything anything else to say about Edward. Uh, I don't think I don't think there's anything much to say because uh, I'll, I'll explain more on the real life basis to the stories when we get when we get to the stories themselves. Right. So uh, so before we get started, let's let's get started with this. Uh, do you have any fond memories of the book? Um. Well, okay. So like I said, for me personally, because I never really grew up on the railway series, I mostly you know remember the TV series um, versions of these stories and everything. I will say, reading the book versions and everything, um, it was a pretty fun book and everything. I remember enjoying it, uh, just enough as a kid when I discovered them on YouTube and such. Uh, because, like I said, most of these stories, um, at, le uh, at, le uh, at least definitely, like, um, I would say definitely uh, the first story and the last story, I've definitely seen them a lot as a kid. And, you know, reading them on the books and everything, it was definitely, you know, lots of fun and such. Um, I, uh, uh, and like and uh, like I said, you know, this book, uh, this book, you know, looking at it again, it's still decent and such. It, uh, uh, it's still a decent book for what it is. Most of the stories are definitely fun and such. Um, yes, I do agree with, you know, a couple of people, or at least I get, uh, or at least I understand the criticism in that, like, uh, this book is not really much about Edward. It's just stuff that focus, that's just basically happening around Edward and such. He's not, I, 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 I mean, there are some parts where actually he is the main focus and he is the main character and such, but it's, mo uh, but it's mostly the uh, supporting characters that basically, you know, uh, uh, no pun intended. That basically drives the story to like you know where to basically like you know how the story ends up the way it does. Yes, I agree. I, I also see the criticisms of the book a little bit. Uh, that is, there's a shocking lack of Edward present in the stories. Like he's not a central character in some of the in, in the stories. But I disagree because the final story it, it, it is one where he's where he's almost the main focus. Pretty, uh, pretty much, and at the same time, I mean, this has been understandable on, like, why, like, you know, he's not really given that much of a main focus, because almost like, you know, from the start, like, you know, Edward is supposed to be a wise engine and everything, like, you know, a wise old engine that doesn't really, you know, get, uh, that basically doesn't really, you know, get himself into too much, you know, mischief and such, like, you know, he's not like Thomas and that, like, you know, he gets, like, overexcited about something to where, like, you know, it causes trouble for him 
And sadly not like Gordon, where like, uh, basically, basically he's too full of himself, and that, you know, ult uh, ultimately gives him his comeuppance and such and everything. So, ba uh, so basically, like, you know, in order to balance out, like, you know, a wise kind, uh, wise kind, uh, engine like Edward, so, uh, sometimes you definitely do need supporting cast to basically, like, help out with that, you know, uh, to basically, ba uh, basically what I'm saying to, like, you know, balance out that, uh, character trait, uh, trait that, you know, Edward has and such. And we're definitely uh, gonna be seeing quality, that once we get to, like, quality. you know, once we get to, like, you know, the next, you know, book that, you know, sort of focuses on Edward, but not really. Yeah, you mean, you were talking about, uh, character quality, in other words. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. So I think that wraps it up. Let's let's get into the stories, cause I think that's what most people here came for. Alrighty. So alright. So in the last season, uh, Bonnie actually did win first for the uh, uh for the last book we did, uh, Gordon the Big Engine. So this time I'm going first with uh, Edward the Blue Engine. And today uh, we and the first story is cows. Yes. So or in uh, the U.S. or in the U.S. If you're in the U.S., uh, a cow on the line. Pretty much same uh, same di uh, same difference, just different titles. Why we don't know. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> Anyway, all right. So yeah. So basically, for cows and such. So basically, the story starts off with uh, uh, with the narrator explaining that Edward is getting old and his part. Uh, uh, basically, he's getting old to the point where basically his parts are getting worn and such. And uh, because his parts are getting worn, he's clanking a lot along the line. And uh, during uh, during this time, he was taking empty uh, empty uh, twenty empty cattle trucks to a market town. But unfortunately for him, you know, the cows, you know, hate trains and everything. They basically, you know. Uh, they basically hate the noise they make and such, and they cause quite a little trouble. Basically, what they did, they uh, basically broke uh, broke through the fence and basically and uh, basically you know da uh, uh, basically damaged the uh, uh, damaged the remaining seven trucks and everything, and I uh, left them on the rails and such. Edward didn't notice at first until uh, until he reached the next station, and because of that, uh, Gordon and Henry uh, ba uh, basically started mocking him and everything, uh, cla uh, claiming that like you know they would have handled the situation a lot more better. If they if they were in Edward's place, Toby basically tries to you know calm uh, calm his friend down and everything, not blaming him for the accident and such. Uh, Edward pays it no mind and such, and basically on the next day or at least several days and such, Gordon and Henry basically you know te uh, test out their theory and that can they actually shoot a cow? Uh, can they actually you know shoot a cow away even better than Edward? Spoiler alert, they don't. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically because of that and everything. Um, uh, eventually, they were able to uh, uh, they were able to move the cow from the line and such. It was mostly because that like um, uh, 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 it was mostly because uh, she lost her calf and everything. She lost her calf, basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She lost her calf and everything because her calf was about ready to be turned into a burger and such, and she did not want to be turned into a burger yet until her mother comes along. So, ba uh, so basically, everyone was uh, so, ba uh, so basically the reporters were like the basic reporters were like, well, two cows want to become a burger. Put them together. We don't care. More money for us. And they ba and they basically and they basically move them away and everything. Uh, Edward and Henry are basically looking like you know, uh, basically looking like you know, complete complete jerks and such. Basically made a, made a complete fool of themselves. That Edward now has the last lap against him, and the cows are all turning to burgers. So McDonald's is happy, and everyone gets their happy meals. The end. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So alrighty. So cows. Um. So uh, so yeah. So going back to what we said in the uh, beginning and everything. Uh, where we said, uh, where we said, uh, mostly, uh, uh, that, uh, that the book is mostly focused, you know, stuff that's happening around, uh, Edward and such. Uh, basically the first story actually does show that, like, yeah, like, even though, like, this book is about Edward, it's really more about, like, Gordon and Henry basically, basically learning a lesson about, you know, don't eat your own words, or at least, like, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't claim, uh, don't claim stuff that, like, you know, you could do, uh, that, uh, that you could do better, that you could do something better than, you know, someone else and everything. Because uh, because, ba uh, because basically when you put into that situation and everything, you make a fool of yourself. Then basically, then uh, basically you know that person or engine is gonna have the, is gonna has uh, have the last laugh on you and such. In other words, in other words, the moral is uh, uh, be careful what you say. Pretty much, don't be a jerk. That's pretty. That's pretty much the moral of any of these books and such. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, like I said, you know, the first story is simple and everything, but I kind of, uh, uh, but I do like it. You know, this is one of those uh, episodes that I uh, that I saw a lot of as a kid, thanks to like you know. Yeah, Thomas come to breakfast, uh, VHS and such, and, and uh, this episode, uh, this episode, I always did like it as a kid. I always found it to be a funny episode, especially, uh, especially with the way that, like, you know, the cow basically, you know, stopped all the trains and everything, and Gordon and Henry can't do anything about it and such. Um, <laughs> and pretty, and uh, pretty much, like, uh, pretty much, um, I really do like the laughs and such. Like, you know, the jokes that, like, you know, we'll put in this episode are still pretty funny, you know. To this day and such, especially like you know, uh, especially with like the ending and everything with Gort, uh, with Gordon, you know, once again trying to like you know, trying to act like you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't that much of a big deal and such and everything. To which like you know, Ed uh, Edward's just like, yeah, sure, Gordon, it wasn't that much of a big of a deal and such. 
it, it, it was still pretty funny to me, nevertheless, and such, so... Uh, so yeah, like I said, you know, this first story, I definitely do enjoy it. Except it definitely still has, you know, the many laughs that, uh, that, uh, that I definitely do come to respect. And uh, and uh, visually, uh, visually at least, uh, illustration-wise and everything, it looks nice and such. I definitely, uh, I definitely do like to look at the feels and such. Um, looking at Viaduct actually does look good. Although yeah, although yeah, I do actually wonder with everyone else, what the hell is that telephone pole doing in the middle of the track? Wait, in what, that wait what? 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 What do you mean? Okay, uh, okay, so, uh, so real quick, go look, uh, uh, I'm actually gonna look this up real too, but, uh, go, uh, but, uh, go to the Thomas Wikipedia real quick and such. I got and... the book here, I, I actually got the book here on my, on my, on my, Alright, so basically, uh, alright, so basically, uh, go, alright, so basically go to the page to where, like, um, uh, to where, uh, to where, like, you see that pole, right here. You see this pole right here, on this bridge? Oh, I don't see it, I'm, I'm actually pulling the, I'm, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's fine. I'm actually pulling the book right now, let's see. Yeah, like I said, it just looks wrong. It kind of, it kind of looks like that. Oh my god! Yeah, look at, look at that! What the fuck? Look at that! Look at that! If any, uh, look at that! If anyone was to move one more inch and everything, he would have crashed into the telephone pole, and everyone would have lost their electricity. So if anything, I think the cow actually saved them. I think that's why the cow was staying on the bridge. He didn't want Henry to run into that telephone pole. Good job, Blue Bill. <laughs> Uh, we're not- we're not even one episode it, it in, and already like Payne is still proving to us that he's still a fuck-up. Yeah. Or Dalby, I should it say, shit like this, It should like this- it's shit like this that makes me hate C. Reginald Dalby as an <laughs> illustrator. Uh, well to- uh, well to be fair, the Wilbur and Andre hated him a long time ago, and he still- and he still couldn't find it in a heart- He still couldn't find it in his heart to either- to either fire him or kill him. <laughs> That's the second time Henry gets trapped. Henry's yeah, pretty much, yeah, pretty much, yeah, this is the second time that, uh, Henry gets trapped and such. Well, I guess, I guess I guess I'll say. Let me say it again. Henry's trapped. <laughs> Henry is trapped. Yeah, he is real trapped. I I I I I, I, I also like it too. That in the next uh, that in the next page, the telephone poles are actually back uh, back to back to the way they were. It's shit like that that makes me hate C. Reginald Dalby as an illustrator. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, like I said, like you know, despite that one fuck up and everything, like you know, the rest of the uh, the rest of the pages are not all that bad to be honest. Yeah, it's it's only one illustration though, so. Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, spe and uh, speaking of Bluebell, real quick, so, uh, do we want to talk about the narrators right now, or do we want, uh, do we want to wait till later? I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the narrators if you want, Alright, uh, uh, alright, uh, all right. so real quick and everything, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so also before I move on, uh, this is actually the uh, first book where there's actually two narrators, um, ba uh, for, at least in terms of the railway series, there's actually two narrators narrating a book. Uh, we got Johnny Morris, who is still back, and technically this is, you know, really... Uh, this is the first introduction to uh, to a new uh, railway series narrator that's well known, uh, uh, Willie Rushton. Willie um, Rushton, yeah. Uh, ba uh, ba uh, basically, I'll let Barney go ahead and explain the uh, situation behind this. Okay, so the problem was uh, Johnny Morris recorded the first eleven books as an EP. He did two stories on on two re on one record. If if you guys get what I mean, one mm -hmm. side one story, the other one another another story. When uh, Johnny Morris's narrations were transferred to cassette. Unfortunately, only the first eight books were transferred to cassette, and that left books nine through sixteen on LP, nine nine through eleven on LP only. So, so when Willie Rush, Willie Rushton came in, they asked him to re-narrate uh, nine through eleven. So that's why if if you if, that's why if you searched up on YouTube, uh, the the most common uh, narrations you're gonna find of the of books nine through eleven are Willie Rushton's because uh, Johnny Morris's narrations of those books are kind of rare. So you yeah. know, I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I mean, to be fair, you can also find those on YouTube as well too. They, yeah, they're on YouTube, like, you know, Tom, like Thomas audio archives and such. Yeah, that's where I listen to all of the all of my audiobooks. Check the channel out if you if you're if you're a World, World series fanatic like we are. Yes, but uh, but anyway, uh, but anyway, in terms of uh, Johnny Morris's narration on this book, um, so I will say this might be one topic that uh, you know Bonnie and I might disagree with slightly and such. Uh, but, I, uh, but I think like you know, especially for like you know the first story and everything. Um, I think Johnny Morris actually did like a real decent job, like uh, narrating a book and everything. Um, uh, 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 he basically still had like you know that energy and everything that he basically had with the last eight books and such. And I especially love the way, I especially love the way he captured the moving sound with the uh, blue bell and such. I think I, I I think he did a phenomenal job right there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think I think he and George Carlin's uh, moves are up to par. Pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty much, uh, pretty much. Whereas, uh, whereas Ringo Starr, uh, Ringo Starr is literally just a moo, moo, moo. <laughs> I'm not getting, I'm not getting paid enough to do this, so moo. 
Any, uh, any, uh, any, uh, one thing, any, one thing uh, I just uh, say, uh, one yeah, thing. I could def and yeah, I could definitely understand why in a U.S. version they definitely want to, and uh, they, uh, they definitely wanted to change that a lot about like uh, basically Blue Bell and the baby basically becoming burgers and such, they, uh, because <laughs> they would have put that line in the U.S. and everything. I can imagine a lot of kids just being like, "What the fuck? They're gonna kill off the kill?" <laughs> I actually, I actually did not know what "ready to go to market" meant until I searched it up, and it's like, "Oh, they're gonna butcher them. They're gonna kill them." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pre pretty much, because that's how society works. I actually did not know that until I did some research. I was I, like, uh, oh. you, know, you know, you know, you uh, know, you know what? I can just imagine a little body, you know, reading that, being, uh, reading that line, and just being like, oh, so just, uh, so, so they're just gonna go to the grocery store. I. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, blue, come on, blue bell, come on, blue bell. I want, uh, come on, blue bell. I want to show you what's gonna happen to you and your kid one day. I'm gonna show you to the butcher real quick. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you to the butcher real quick, and then you can let me know what kind of gallon of milk you want. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, but, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> but yeah, uh, all right. So as for me, I don't really have too much to say on the first story and everything. Um, it's still a fun story. Uh, it's still a fun story overall and everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't really have too many negatives to say uh, to say on it. It's sim uh, it's simple, yes. Uh, but it's still a simple fun and everything. There's still some good visuals. Uh, still some good laughs that this episode throws in, and uh, definitely a couple of good, like, you know, character moments as well, too, in the episode as well. And this is actually one of the rare times, like, you know, at least in terms of the TV series version, it's actually one of the rare times where you actually get, uh, where you actually get to see Edward's cross face as well. So, uh, so, uh, so that was actually kind of a, l a little nice touch right over there. Uh, yeah, so uh, one thing, one thing I love about the TV series version is that when Henry comes, when Henry's about to, to meet Bluebell, Gordon is just smiling like... Hey, 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 yeah, 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 Gord, uh, you, you know, you know, uh, you know, there's actually only two things that, like, uh, you kind of interpret that with that smile, I, uh, I, uh, either, uh, either, uh, either A, that, like, you know, he's grateful that Henry is here, and hopefully that, like, you know, he is gonna shoot him away, or B, uh, or B, he's actually just great, I kind of want to wait to see for Henry to mess up as well, too, just so he can make fun of him later. Yeah, I I I I I I, cho I I think the latter is is what yeah, I think. Yeah, to be honest, uh, uh, you know uh, you know what the, uh, you know what that is also one thing I kind of you know also see why the TV series also changed a little bit. Um, but uh, but in the book version, I was kind of wondering like you know how did they get that cow all the way over to like the viaduct and everything, uh, the viaduct and everything, because like you know I uh, I can imagine it was probably a little bit of pain in the ass just to get that uh, just to get that baby cow all the way over to his mother in the first place. I I know right. It yeah. must have been a pain in the butt. Pay, uh, pain in the butt, pain in the ass, whatever. Whatever, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah. So I can definitely see why, like you know, TV series changed to like you know, which is Percy, you know, bringing the cow over to the bridge and such. Uh, but overall, in terms of like uh, my rating uh, for this first story, you know what? Uh, you know what? It's a good enough story in there that I'm gonna give it an eight. Uh, I uh, I think the story deserves an eight. Okay. Not a bad rating. Not a bad rating to be to tell you the truth. Nope. So go ahead, your turn. Okay. So cows, uh, I will admit that this is one, this was one of the stories that the first time I read it, I kind of I kind of felt bored. Second time I read it, I was also bored. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, wait a moment, hang on a second. Wait and then I realized it's I Johnny realized Morris. That telephone line. And then I noticed it's Johnny Morris's <laughs> narration. Yep. Unfortunately, this is where we're gonna disagree. But I don't think Johnny Moore's did a good job in 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 from books nine through eleven, because, oh my God, his narration was so unmemorable and so boring. Will, there was uh, a couple. Right, before you continue, I will admit, um, uh, the first two stories, I think he still, I think he still had the energy. But I do definitely agree with you. Once you got, uh, once I definitely got to like you know, save from scrap and old iron again. I definitely do get a hint that like Johnny Morris was uh, kind of almost uh, was kind of almost reaching at a point where like uh, you kind of almost kind of tell that like he was uh, he, uh, he was ready to retire from the narrating business and such. But, yes, because uh, I, I, I can't really quite place I really can't quite put my finger on it and such. But it uh, 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 but it was just a way that like you know the way uh, the way he would deliver his lines, especially in the last two stories. It was just something to the way, like, you know, if I was to listen to his narration in the previous two stories, you definitely do kind of get to hint that uh, the lack of enthusiasm he's starting to show for the books. Yes. Uh, and that's why that's why I like uh, Rushton better than him. A lot of people are going to disagree with me there because uh, most people grew up with Johnny Morris, and that's fine. I don't, yeah. I, I don't mind. 
But I, I just think Russian demolishes every single narrator uh, before I, I, and after. I, I, I do, uh, uh, I do agree. Uh, I do agree. I do think Russian actually does do like you know a really good job, and like uh, the only real downside to it is that uh, uh, is that like as most people point out and everything. Um, it doesn't really give, you know, too many different voices to different engines and such. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, man, uh, but, uh, but, man, uh, but, man, when he can deliver the line, he can deliver a line. He really delivers good. it. He can like... really put it, he can really put in just as much energy into, like, the characters as Johnny Morris could. Yes. Uh, he even admitted it on the, on the Thomas the Tank Engine Man. Like, he couldn't, he, he admitted that he couldn't do voices as well as Morris did. But I, I think, but I think his, uh, but I think he, he did a solid job on this book. Uh, one one particular uh moment. Uh, even even on the first line, Edward the Blue Engine was getting old. His parents were worn. When I hear his voice, I just start smiling and getting ready to laugh because I love his narration to death. <laughs> but going back to cows, uh, we were, we got we go we got off topic with the narrators. A little, uh, a, 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 little uh, a little bit, but it would de- uh, but it would definitely you know. Uh, play. Uh, 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 it's definitely going to play a part on how we're going to feel about the later books coming on, uh, coming soon down the road. Yes, uh, I I will admit I did not enjoy Rush. Uh, no, no, not Rushton. Uh, Morris's narration for for the book, it it because it went very slow, and I was starting to the I was getting to the point where like I was like going, can we please move on to the next story, please? Well, the, uh, I, I'm actually kind of funny that you mentioned that. To me, it wasn't so much slow. It's just more that, like, um, again, like, going back to what I was saying about, you know, uh, you can notice his lack of enthusiasm with the books and everything. It kind of also felt like he wanted, uh, he wanted to get these stories done as quick as he can. Because uh, uh, definitely in the last story, Old Iron and everything, he really skips a lot of lines. Yes, I was actually furious when he skipped one line in Old Iron, but we'll get to Old Iron and, in a minute. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, so yeah. For me, uh, for me, uh, for me, like you know, uh, I kind of get the feeling that you want to get done with these stories as quick, uh, ba- uh, basically as quick as you can, so you can go home and take a nap. <laughs> yes, but uh, cows for me, the story itself, um, I will admit it's not one of my favorite stories from the railway series. I will admit, it's one, it's one where you have to be in the right mood to read it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh you're probably gonna disagree with me there, but. It's just that I, I, it's just I don't return to this book very often, so that that could be the reason why uh, I prefer like the TV episode over the storybook version. Mm-hmm. Well, no, uh, well, no, I definitely do understand. Uh, once we get to the final rating and everything, um, I'm pretty much going to share some of the same thoughts you have on this book and everything. Because I'll admit, like you know, um, uh, uh, as uh, as much as I do enjoy these stories and everything, I do enjoy you know uh, reading this book from time to time. I, de- I definitely would not I definitely would not put it in like you know my top five favorite books and everything but to be fair I don't think it would even be in the top 10 if I'm being perfectly honest yeah I, I agree with you there I-, I I don't think this one's gonna be in my top five either nor nor my top 10 nor top 15 uh but uh cows I, I actually enjoyed uh, a couple moments I enjoyed the 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 part <laughs> where Gordon and Henry are, are trying to shoot bluebill off the the bridge yeah I, 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 uh, uh, to, uh, to be fair, uh, to be fair, I also like, uh, I definitely also like on how, like, you know, uh, the passengers and the driver and fireman also try their best as well, too. Yes, I, I was actually, I, I was actually, I was actually, I actually found that kind of funny as well. Uh, but one thing that I really love is, I think you know, you already know what I'm going to say. Go ahead. The two grandpas are interacting with each other. Uh, yeah, and yeah, this is the only time, like, both, and like, both the railway series and the TV series were ever going to see that, actually. Yes, it's a shame though, cause those two, those two would have made would have made for a great episode. It would, um, at the very least, like you know, it would have been, uh, it definitely would have been a little interesting to get like you know more moments, like you know, with those two, and definitely see like, what are some of the differences between like you know their characters and everything too, cause like I said, you know, a couple of Thomas fans uh, definitely you know uh, brought up some uh, good uh, good points in terms of Edward and Toby having like you know similar characters, but more like you know different personalities and how basically how they handle being old and wise and how to. Like how they had about like you know teaching engines a lesson and such. Yes, because uh, th- because if you think about it, they're mostly the same with just a few differences. Edward is the type of of person that will say, I will say, hey, you're doing this wrong. You're supposed to do it this way. Whereas Toby is the type of guy that 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 lets lets the the underdog do it, let the underdog embarrass himself, laughs at him, and then basically shows him how it's done. Pretty much, yeah. Um, a de- a def- uh, definitely, at least, a definitely, you know, turns out the example stories that, like, you know, we're gonna be seeing as well too. 
I, I, I think another difference is that, like, Edward is kind of the more passive engine than Toby. And, like, uh, Edward is the type of engine that doesn't like starting fights if he doesn't have to and everything. He, uh, he's, he, he's definitely kind of one of those engines that kind of, you know, does his best to ignore when he's being bullied or being made fun of because he knows that, like, you know, that's not really true about him and everything. And he doesn't let, and he doesn't let anyone get him down. But, to, uh, but Toby, man, like, you know, if you say anything bad about Toby or you're trying to pick a fight with Toby, then let me just say that, like, you know, I hope you may not you will right away because, like, Toby is definitely not going to forget that one bit. Oh, yes. And we're going to see that. Actually, we're going to see that in season three and season and actually at the very end of this uh, season. Spoiler alert. Pretty much. Yeah. So uh, for cows, uh, let me go back. Going back to the stories because we went off topic a little <laughs> go bit. Ahead. Um, we're going to be doing this a lot, folks. Yeah, we're going to be doing this a lot. So get used to it. Because like I said, we have no scripts. Professionalism, what's that? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my reading for the storybook version of Cows, um, I thought long and hard about this. And, uh, I have to be honest with myself, and I'm gonna give the story, um, yeah, you know what? As much as I don't want to do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a six. Alright, uh, alright, so you give it a six, I gave it an eight, so... The reason I give it a six is because, um, it... Because compared to the TV series version, where it has a little bit more humor, the you there's a there's a huge difference, I, I, and and I and you're gonna be and you guys are gonna be saying, oh oh that's obvious because they're two different formats, but it's just the book version is not the same as the TV episode. I think the TV episode does a much better job in presenting the humor more, mm -hmm. so that's why I give it a six. Alrighty, all right, so on to the next story, which is Birdie's Chase. All right. So Birdie's Chase, we start off with Edward being impatient because he's waiting for Thomas to come. Uh, Thomas, Thomas, the reason why Thomas doesn't come is because uh, his fireman is ill. So Birdie volunteers to take Thomas's passengers, but unfortunately he doesn't arrive on time and Edward departs and Birdie kind of chases Edward around. Uh, it happens twice, and after the third and before uh, Edward leaves for the third time. Uh, Birdie arrives at the station and and tells Edward uh, about the change, mm -hmm. and basically the story ends and that's it. So um, unfortunately, this is another one where where I'm gonna say it again. The TV episode is much better than the storybook version, but I will say like the the <laughs> the narrator that Johnny Moore's did on this one was pretty good. I will say it the was. sound I, effects. I, I, de I definitely do agree, especially. Uh, you, you know, you know what? I especially love the honky noises he does with Birdie and everything. Almost kind of, almost kind of making Birdie sound like he's a goose or something. Yeah. And I definitely do also like you know the sound effects he also makes too. Like you know whenever uh, whenever Birdie is revving up um, um, his engine and uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also the uh, line uh, basically the scene where like you know like you know a, co a cocktail almost lost his feathers and such and like you know uh, hands and dogs scattering everywhere and such. I also like the 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 we the 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 tire screeching. The... <laughs> I yeah. thought I thought it was like holy crap! Is there an elephant in the studio now? I <laughs> know, uh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm pretty sure that uh, Johnny Morris had some Taco Bell for uh, uh, had some Taco Bell before uh, recording uh, uh, before recording. And uh, it basically just had to do a long fart. <laughs> So 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 yeah, John, uh, uh, but Bully Rushton also did a good job, right? Chur, chur, chur. He did, he, uh, he did, he definitely did. Uh, real, uh, real quick, uh, real quick. In terms of like you know the Railway Series version, uh, basically, who did the uh, scene voice better, in your opinion? Rushton. Rushton. Because right. uh, because uh, Johnny Morris didn't didn't do it correctly. It's supposed to be oh dear, what can the matter be? Johnny so long, and that's it. It's supposed to be that way. Johnny Morris uh, uh add some lines that doesn't work in my opinion i understand so uh, that's why i picked russian russian did it correctly uh but going back to the story um this is another one where i prefer the, the tv episode over the book version nothing against the book version uh the book version actually actually has some scenes that are not present in the tv episode like there's a like like uh, there's a there's an additional scene where birdie arrives and said where where birdie arrives and it's like and the narrator says then it all happened at once like Birdie arrives, and then all the passengers just rush to the train. Pretty much. And I also, I also laughed at the scene where, where the where the station master snapped the the the, the flag. <laughs> uh, yeah, out of, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, I can just imagine, like you know, as soon as like you know, Ed was about ready to leave, it was just, uh, uh, basically Birdie and the station driver was just like, no, 
Not no. again. Please. <laughs> I was actually laughing when I when I when I when I read that. I wish that could have happened in the TV episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no, same here. I do remember the Railway Series Book Club uh, commenting on the story, and yeah, uh, and yeah, uh, this is one of the you know really you know unfortunate stuff when it comes with like the TV ep uh, TV series, like you know because they are working with like action figures, uh, 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 basically in a certain sense, they really can't do that much with them. Um, capture like the visual scenes that like the books, uh, you know, the books are like you know capturing as well. Uh, 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 which at the same time, like, you know, some people can either say that, like, you know, that's a good thing because, like, you know, when you read the Railway series, you know, when you read the book, uh, when you read the book version of it, like, you know, you can just picture it in your head and kind of imagine, like, you know, uh, kind of imagine how that scene is going, uh, how that scene is going, and then, uh, then you, uh, then, you know, you can still, you know, uh, uh, laugh at it just because, like, you know, it's so silly. Yeah, one thing that I love, love, love that the TV series version did is that scene with Thomas. That's that 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 scene to me. I can't watch. I can't have Birdie's chase without that scene. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it, it, uh, it was definitely a nice little you know, idea, or at least like you know, it definitely was like you know, a clever idea of having uh, Thomas being shown in the end and everything. Just uh, because kind, uh, kind uh, of, he, uh, he, basically, you know, ra uh, wrapping up the story, like you know, in a different way. Yeah, because in the book version, um, it just ends all of a sudden. The the, the Edward leaves and three cheers for Birdie. That's it. Pretty much. It kind of feels like a like a sudden end and. That yeah. kind of felt a little bit lacking. Uh, uh, well, I mean, to be fair, I don't really mind the ending of the book version as well either, because like you know, it's still technically a happy ending. But uh, but yeah, I definitely do see where you're coming from with that. With that oh yeah, oh yes, yeah, it's a happy ending. I will agree, it is a happy ending, but it kind of felt a little bit lacking in my opinion. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. So if if oh, and I forgot to mention the TV episode. I think I know where I'm going with it. There's one thing I also love about the TV series version, the music. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. We get to hear uh, Birdie's uh, theme. Uh, we get to hear Birdie's theme once again and everything. Uh, de uh, definitely a little. Uh, de uh, it definitely upgraded a little bit too. Yeah, they they, they actually made they actually made the 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 season th well what became the season three version of when Birdie starts to chase for a second time. And my favorite scene of the TV episode is the scene where Edward is passing through the bridge at the very top, and mm -hmm. Birdie just goes at the but bottom. I love that scene to death. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty much. And then you, de you definitely also hear like you know the tire, ba uh, basically the tire screen as well too, because like you know the dry, uh, because like I said, you know Barry is just like I'm not doing this again. You better be at the station or so help me. <laughs> I could just imagine, I could just imagine Ber Birdie in the book version, Birdie at the Birdie arriving at the station is like, don't you dare, don't you move dare, an inch. please. <laughs> So as for Birdie's Chase, uh, my rating for Birdie's Chase, um, I will say this story was much better than uh, Cows, and I think and I think both narrators did a did a solid job on the narration. Mm -hmm. So you know what, I was originally thinking of giving it a seven, but you know what, I think an eight, it's probably the best rating I can give it. All right, so you gave it an eight. So alrighty, so far your score is a fourteen out of forty so far. Uh, with the book and everything. All right. All right. Not too bad, though. No, not too bad. Definitely not too bad at all. So, alrighty. Now my turn with uh, Birdie's Chase and and uh, yeah, pretty much as uh, Bonnie has stated and such. Um, this uh, uh the story is a uh, the story is a real fun story. Uh, um, again, it's another simple one. Again, it's more about Birdie than Edward and such. Uh, but uh, but Edward definitely is more of a main character this time and everything. I uh, like this story and everything. Um, he definitely does. Uh, def uh, he definitely does carry the meat to the story, as they say, and everything. And uh, ba and uh, ba and uh, basically, like, in and basically, like, you know, he's the reason I like, you know, Birdie's going through all this misery, uh, all this misery, and just trying to you know, bring the passenger, uh, bring the passengers to like, you know, his train and everything, all because that, like, you know, Thomas the fireman is uh, basically you know. sick and such. Uh, 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 you, uh, you know what this is kind of like? Uh, uh, this sounds kind of like, you know, an equivalent of like, basically, like, you know, you see ice cream truck going by and everything. Yes. And, like, and, and, and basically, like, you know, you got the morning ready and everything, but too late, you know, the ice cream truck starts, you know, driving off. So basically, you kind of force your parents just to, like, you know, follow, follow, follow the ice cream truck until, until, like, you get that goddamn ice cream that you want. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's the best example you can give it. <laughs> pretty, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much and such. Um, hey, wait, 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 hey, wait, 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 I want, wait, I want that, what, wait, I want that creepy SpongeBob looking ice cream, wait! Oh my god, I ne I'm glad I never had one of those, cause, oh my god. <laughs> I, um, you, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't think I had the SpongeBob one, but I think I had, like, the Tweebird one, and I think I had the Dora one, too, but I don't remember. 
it's been uh, it's been a real long time since I, uh, since I ever got an ice cream from a truck. Now, 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 now nowadays I just go to Dairy Queens. Not, not the the last one I ate from one of those trucks was a Nesquik one. Oh, oh my god, it it was shit. <laughs> Oh it was the worst piece of <laughs> shit I have ever tasted. Oh boy! And then and then and then at the and then at the dot bar, he never trusted an ice cream, uh, never trusted an ice cream truck again. I never did. That's <laughs> not, you, you, that's exactly right. I never trusted. <laughs> oh boy! But you, but you know what I hate? Would you know what I hate the most? Would you uh, know what I hate the most? What is those is those ice creams that that try to pretend it's a different flavor, but it's actually oh. vanilla dressed up as oh. another flavor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of hate. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I definitely do kind of know what you're talking about on that one. Cause uh, there was an ice cream truck that used to pass on, on my grandmother's house like every freaking night. Uh huh. And one time, one time, my my grandma was like, "You want some ice cream?" I was like, "Sure, let's give it a shot." I asked for chocolate, right? Uh huh. So she went down to the to buy it. I, I was expecting like you know normal, just uh, plain chocolate. Uh huh. When I saw it, I was horrified. I was like. What the fuck is this? It, it it was it was vanilla it was vanilla dressed up as chocolate. And I was like, I'm not, I ain't eating this piece of crap. <laughs> I had to, unfortunately, and it was it was the it was a piece of crap. Yeah, <laughs> I can just imagine, like you know, the ice cream man just probably like you know took a vanilla ice cream, and basically like you know just basically like you know spray paint uh, spray paint and, like you know dark brown like paint onto it. And just That's exactly what he did. Like, That's you know, exactly what he did. That's exactly what the the mother the the freaking the uh, no no I shouldn't say motherfucker. That's exactly what what the guy did. <laughs> oh boy. And yeah. and and, uh, and he hasn't passed by there for a couple of years now. So I guess I guess I guess the ice creams didn't sell well where grandma or grandma lived. So oh, well. uh, so more of the story, kids. Don't ever trust an ice cream truck ever again. <laughs> Yes. Go, it, 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 no, but, but going, it, it, back, it, it, going back to the to, to birdies chase. Going back to birdies chase. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going back to birdies chase and everything. So, so, uh, so, Barney, put down that ice cream. We're still, we're still talking about this book. <laughs> but yeah. So, all right. So for me, for birdies chase, um, I don't have too much to say on this. Um, the only thing I will say is like, you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. This is actually the first time that like, you know, we actually get to see um Edwards and Patience side. Uh, 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 um. Uh, well, actually, not the first time. The first time we got to saw his patient shy was that uh, was actually like On the very first uh, story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Edward's uh, day out and such. So, uh, uh, so it was actually kind of interesting to, uh, to see that character. Um, ba uh, basically, like you know, uh, uh, in this story as well too and such. Uh, uh, well, actually, in a way, he was uh, 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 he was worried for Thomas in a way. Because, uh, because, uh, as you also said, uh, like you know, Thomas doesn't usually make him wait, and because you know, like Edward, he also wants to be out, uh, he also wants to be on time as well too. So, uh, so I could imagine, uh, so, uh, so I could, uh, so I actually could imagine Edward probably being, you know, a little worried about Thomas and wondering, like you know, uh, and wondering, like you know, is he doing okay and such. So yeah, and I, one thing I was gonna mention, uh, they're, they're, we're gonna mention it in the next story, but this is the only time where an engine's drivers are named, and Edward's Edward's driver and fireman have names. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, Charlie and uh, Sid. Charlie Sand and Sidney Heaver. Pretty much, yes. Uh, but yeah, so in terms of me and everything, uh, with my rating for the book, um, this is still a fun story, like, um, uh, uh, from beginning to end and everything. It's got plenty of laughs, like, you know, uh, especially the way that, like, you know, Wilbur writes down the whole chase scene. It's like, you know, Birdie is trying to catch up with Edward and such and everything. It was really creative, I will say. And like I said, you know, uh, definitely offer lots of funny moments, too, with, uh, with what, you know, uh, Wilbur had to write down as well, too. So, uh, so I can definitely imagine that, like, you know, Wilbur probably also had fun writing the story as well, too. And, and, uh, basically because of that, I'm also gonna give the story an 8 as well. Okay, so we're so we're so same score on. Uh, so pretty, and I believe I'm one. You're one point ahead or two points. Uh, I don't uh, know. Uh, still two points, cause uh, cause the first story also gave me eight as well. So uh, so right now my final uh, my final score for the book so far is a sixteen out of forty so far. So two points ahead. All right. Yep. All right. Oh boy, we're not small. Yeah, save from scrap. Alrighty, so save from scrap. So the uh so uh, 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 uh all right. So basically, in the beginning of the story. Uh, we're giving a little bit of a lore in that, like, um, uh, uh, basically on Edward's branch line and such, there's actually a little, uh, scrapyard and such. Uh, but in that certain scrapyard, a traction engine named Trevor is over there, and Edward finds out that he's gonna be broken up next week and such. And, and, uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, 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 after, uh, after Trevor tells, you know, Edward his life story about what he used to do before, uh, what he used to do before being sent to scrapyard, it, ba it basically gives Edward, uh, basically gives Edward a motivation to try to save, uh, to try to save, you know, Trevor. 
And uh, thankfully, and uh, thankfully, after asking around so many of his friends, uh, his one friend, a vicar, uh, ba uh, bas uh, basically went over to the scrapyard and everything. Uh, took a look at Trevor, right, uh, ride him around a little bit, and uh, ba and uh, basically he was able to buy him cheap and such. So now, so now Trevor is safe and is now in the Figueres orchard thanks to Edward. So this story is actually a really sweet one and such. Um, uh, th uh, this story, uh, this story, uh, this story, I've always loved this story as a kid and like you know. Uh, oh, same I here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, and uh, uh, even reading a book version of the story as well too, it's still a real good story and such. I definitely do love the more added detail about like you know what Trevor used to do, uh, um, uh, ba uh, basically, uh, basically before like you know he got uh, he got sent to scrap and everything. And then, and uh, I will admit like you know the uh, illustration, uh, uh, basically the illustration where we get to see you know Trevor working on the road, it was really beautiful. I I I think Dalby did a really great job on that yes. illustration and everything. I agree. I agree. And, and, and I definitely, and I definitely love the way how he illustrated Trevor. That, uh, uh, like, uh, 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 again, that's probably one of the few characters and everything where he got down really good and everything. Yeah, this Trevor. is the only. This is probably the only time we're gonna see Trevor in a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah in a very long time. I, 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 actually, actually, this is the only time we're ever gonna see him in like you know, um, uh, basically in Wilbur's stories, period, and such. Shockingly so, yeah. little focus on it on Wilbur's books. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, this is gonna be. You know, we're probably uh, we probably might expand on this. You know, a little bit more. Pro uh, probably either in this season or the next or the next season and everything. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah. Just because we like Wilbur and everything doesn't mean, like I said, you know, uh, doesn't mean that like you know we're gonna uh, we're gonna free him from any criticism because because uh, 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 as, uh, as much as like you know. Um, us Thomas fans like to complain that like, uh, Hit Entertainment or Mattel makes too many, you know, one-shot characters and everything. Wilbur was also pretty much guilty of doing that as well, too, in his books as well. Christopher, and, uh, Chris, uh, as saying goes for Christopher, both of them were guilty of doing that. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, uh, well, I mean, for uh, well, I mean, at least for Christopher, he had kind of more of an excuse because which is more like you know the publishers wanting more Thomas stories as well, too. And that's kind of uh, and that's a basic kind of reason why I like you know some of the new characters they did. Uh, that Chris was able to make, they get that much time to shine and everything. So, uh, so, uh, so at least for Chris, I'm willing to at least you know give him some leeway. Uh, uh, at least for the reason on why you know that was the case and such and everything. Um, and at least for Wilbert, I guess I can kind of understand why, like you know, uh, if he didn't write too much for Trevor and everything. Cause yeah, when you're gonna get down to it and such, Trevor's story is basically done in a sort of sense. Like you know. Edward has pretty much, you know, accomplished the ambition he wanted to do: find Trevor a new home and save him from being scrapped. He saved him. And actually, Trevor. And actually, Trevor. Trevor is actually based on. Uh, okay, so the Wilbur, Wilbur already had a, had a friend named Teddy Boston, who was a, also a clergyman, like he was. Yes. And and Teddy owned a traction engine named Fiery Elias, and yeah. and that was and Fiery Elias was the inspiration for Trevor. Pretty much, yeah. And he's still around, believe it or not. Fiery Elias is still around. Oh, nice. Uh, yes. uh, that's a nice little fun fact to hear. But, uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah. Going back and everything, like you know, I could kind of understand why you know Wilbur didn't want to make too much uh, stories about Trevor and such, because there's not really too much you could do around with this character and such and everything. I mean, uh, I, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, granted, like you know, Brit. Uh, uh, well, uh, actually, more. Uh, actually, no. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, uh, but in that season three episode, I think that was a uh, magazine story at first, wasn't it? It was actually written. It was actually based on two magazine stories written by Andrew Brenner, and they combined them both into one episode. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so, yeah. Uh, even if Wilbur, like you know, didn't do too many stories for Trevor, like um, at, 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 uh, at least uh, at least there were some other writers that like you know were uh, were at least able to like try to give you know Trevor a chance to like you know be uh, uh and like you know uh, updating his character uh, uh, as much as they could and such. Great story, uh, by the way. Plus. Great story, by the way. Edward Trevor and the Release for Party. One of my favorite it, episodes from season three. It, it, it is. It is definitely a good story. It, a definitely really good Trevor story, too. And such. Yeah, my, my favorite scenes are, are the party. The party itself. Oh, uh, oh, de uh, oh, def uh, oh, definitely. Especially, like, you know, how Trevor kind of teased Birdie and being, like, you know, sticking about as well, too. Because let's be honest, Birdie had that coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and yeah, and, and yeah, and yeah, and yeah, and yeah, that's, uh, and yeah, that's actually one of the few episodes where, like, you know, we get to see more of the road vehicles than the engines as well, too. So, again, that's also another plus right there. But anyway, I going agree. back to uh, Save from Scrap and everything, um, I don't really have too much to say. I don't really have, you know, too many negative uh, negative things to say about, like, the story overall. It's still a really good story. It's still a sweet one. 
Uh, but again, uh, 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 and, uh, uh, and, uh, and again, there's another story where actually Edward actually does play a main focus, and that, like, you know, he's the reason that Trevor's still alive to this day and everything, too. Uh, Edward totally did not have to save Trevor and everything. He could have just let him, uh, be sent for scrap, but no, uh, but no, he wanted to save him. And, uh, technically, there wasn't really much of a reason to save him. He just wanted to save him because, like, you know, he's that good of an engine and everything. Yeah, he's basically that, uh, he's basically that, uh, he's basically that kind of an engine and everything, and that, uh, that basically, you know, it's no wonder why, like, you know, he's a fan favorite among, like, you know, Thomas fans and such, so. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, one more thing I actually do like, uh, uh, one more thing real quick, too. Um, I actually do think it's actually really cute, though. Ba uh, basically, how much, you know, the boys wanted to ride, uh, wanted to ride in Trevor after, like, you know, uh, the vicar actually bought him and everything, too. That, uh, I think that was actually real sweet. I love that line that says, I, yeah. I, let me see, I have it here, let's see. Uh, I love that line, uh, uh, let me see if I can find it, uh. Will you drive him home for me, Jim, and take these scallywags with you? They won't want to come in a, in the car when there's a traction engine to ride on. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually a good line at Wilbur Road right there and such. So actually, yeah, yeah you know what? Um, the story just has too many good moments and everything too. That, you know what? I'm gonna give it a nine. I'm gonna give it a nine. Like you know, it's uh, it, it, it's still a really good story to this day and everything. And like you know, I can actually see myself you know coming back to read it again and again. Like you know, if I uh, uh, whenever I want to. All right, so for me, uh, safe and scrap, uh, it's 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 a great story. Like I agree, like it's a great story. Like I was, this was one of the very few stories where I wasn't bored at all reading it. Mm -hmm. Like I actually, I actually, I actually went went in expecting to be bored as well. But no, it was actually it was actually fun reading it. And and I <laughs> once again, I love Johnny Morris what he did for Trevor. That oh, voice yeah. for Trevor, man. And and. <laughs> Again, Johnny Morris had too many Taco Bells that day. But 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 yeah, you brought up a good point about about you know Johnny Morris's voice for Trevor. Right? It does really suit him, especially you know, given like sort almost kind of sort of like a country accent, if you if you will, with him and such. Yes, I agree. I agree. Um and then and I don't think I don't think I have any anything else to say about the story. I I also love Trevor's theme from the TV series. Oh uh, uh, oh uh, uh, oh oh yes, that's the best theme right there. And and yeah, I think that's it because uh, you pretty much nailed everything what I was gonna say. <laughs> so for my rating, um, I still really enjoy the story, and you know what, I'm gonna give it a nine as well. It's a great story. Alrighty, so you gave it a nine. So right now you have a uh, 23 out of 40 for the whole book. Uh, as for me, I gave an 8 and then another 8 and then another 9. I got a 25 out of 40, so I'm still two points ahead. <laughs> All right, okay, well, let's see here we how go. the final story is going to treat us. So here we go. Old Iron, take it away, buddy. Uh Oh, oh. Oh yeah, me. All right, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 you. Uh, yeah, yeah, you. Uh, yeah, you. Unless you want me to take over it. Oh no 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 no! It's just it's just that I thought I thought I thought it started. Oh yeah yeah yeah! Forget it forget yeah. it. So that my yeah, brain isn't yeah, working. Yeah, no, go right ahead. All right. So old iron it, old iron starts off with uh, James uh, uh, being angry that Edward is late, and then he he goes around bad, bad mouthing Edwards, calling him an old iron, and Thomas and Percy step up to defend Edward, which we don't actually see in the book, but we see it in the TV episode. Well, well, uh, well, I mean, like we don't see it in the book, but it, uh, but it is applied in the book that, like, you know, they uh, they do stand up for him. Yeah, and James still continues to be a rude asshole. Uh, uh, continues to be ma bat mouthing Edward. <laughs> but then one day, uh, James's James's driver is, is feeling ill. He tries to work, but unfortunately, by the time they reach the station, he can hardly stand. And so, so what they ended up doing is that uh, the the fireman takes him to I think the hospital or somewhere. Um, well, uh, well, okay, in the book, uh, well, uh, well, at least in the book, it's applied at, like, um, um, uh, ba uh, ba uh, basically it took the driver to, like, you know, the sink, uh, ba uh, basically to, like, a station, or at least, uh, the single box and everything, and basically told, uh, basically told him to, uh, look after him and find a substitute, so, as uh, so, uh, so I think, yes, you are technically right in that, like, eventually, like, you know, he does reach a hospital at some point. Yeah, so, so, so he takes it to the station, and then, uh, while the fireman is looking for a relief, uh, two boys climb into James's uh, footplate and actually uh, touch his controls, and he goes away without, you know, without the, the fireman. Mm -hmm. So, so what ended up what they ended up doing is that the that uh, that the signalman calls uh, calls, and there's an inspector coming to catch James to stop him. Uh, is that correct, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, but, uh, yes, but I think you are. I don't know necessarily if. 
he calls them, but I do know that at least, uh, but I do know that at least he uh, he at least receives a call saying that like you know these. Yeah, well, well, well he receives well he receives a call. He receives a call from from uh, from uh, from an inspector. Yeah. Where where he where he requests a uh, shunter's pole and a uh, and a uh, and and a rope. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba basically, a shunter's pole and a coil of wire rope. Yeah. So then after that, the real the real fun begins. Uh, James realizes he has no driver and goes off running running wild while Edward tries to catch up to him. And well and well and well, uh, Edward catches up to him. The inspector uh, manages to stop James, even though he almost fell <laughs> a, a few times. times yeah. and, and well, he managed to he managed to he managed to stop the two trains. Edward ever looks at James and is like, "So you've been badmouthing me, and the old Irie caught you after all." <laughs> And James, James apologizes to Edward. Uh, the fact controller uh, uh, sees uh, the fact controller orders James to rest, so he then he can take the train. And he sends Edward to, to go to the works to be mended. And yeah, maybe wondering, and, 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 and basically, what kind of works that the fact controller sent Edward to? We'll find out, oh, out yeah. in the next episode. You'll find out in the very next episode. Correct. <laughs> so what ended up happening to the, so what happened to the boys? You may be asking. Well, well, let's just well, let, uh, well, let's just say when they returned home, their fathers actually gave him some flowers and candy and everything. They were actually very proud that he almost. They were actually very proud that he uh, that he almost basically you know caught uh, caused an engine to kill tons of people and such. No, no. Uh it was a different time. Let's yeah, be, let's... It, it, yeah, uh, yeah. It was a different time and everything. Now go ahead. Yeah, you, you finish. They were walloped by their fathers. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they were walloped sadly by their fathers, which. To be fair, uh, 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 well, okay, yeah, uh, uh, actually, yeah, there's no better way to word this, but, yeah, to be fair yeah. and everything, they could, uh, they, uh, they could have ended up with a much worse punishment and everything. If, if, if anything, they basically kind of got off, uh, they also, they, they mostly kind of got off scot-free and such, because, like, cause like I said, if they were to go to jail and everything, or, or, or basically, if they were in another country and they pulled that, or, and they pulled that kind of stun, I would probably leave that country as soon as I can. Yes, me too. Me too. And well, and well, after that, uh, after that, uh, let's get away from that. Yeah. Uh, let's get uh, let's get away from that controversy. Yeah, let's get away from that controversy. Exactly. Uh, Ever returns from the works, and they gave him three cheers. And the fat controller thinks he will be deaf for weeks. As if, uh, to, uh, to be fair, uh, to be fair, uh, to be fair, as if he, uh, as if he's not deaf already. <laughs> But but yeah but yeah let, let's not address the, the the thing about the boys because it, it was yeah, a different but, time but 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 that did not age well let's be real yeah I mean I mean I guess it just depends on like you know where where you're from and what you, basically what you grew up with in a household and everything but uh, but yeah uh, but yeah that kind of stuff was kind of common because what this book came out in like what early fifties and such if I remember right this was in fifty four this came out in fifty four yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah so that kind of, yeah so that kind of punishment was still kind of the norm back then and everything so. It's not really all that out of context, and like I said, um, uh, this is just me personally and everything, but like I said, the boys kind of caught off scot-free in the end and everything, and like, you know, they were going to be punished either way for what they did, because like I said, you know, because uh, like I said, you know, they uh, they basically almost kind of, you know, uh, not only caused the runaway, uh, caused the runaway, but they almost caused a greater risk of someone getting injured because, uh, someone getting injured because of their stupidity. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I can kind of understand why the TV series also cut that line out in like both versions. John, to be off, to be fair, Johnny Moore should have cut that as well because he cut he cut off probably the the best part of the story, which was uh, uh, uh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, with Thomas and Percy, you know, standing up for uh, Edward and such. No, uh, he cut the 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 part before the the boys were caught. Basically, oh, yeah. uh, a fine piece of work, James. You can rest and then take your train. Basically, that part. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, old Iron, uh, let's let's push the the controversy aside because you know we we're here to talk about the story. Yes. So, old Iron, my God, you couldn't you couldn't have asked for a better finale than this. I agree. I definitely this, agree with you right there. This story is awesome, awesome from beginning to end. It just goes to show that sometimes your words can have consequences. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, man, I'm trying to think properly what I'm going to uh, say. Uh, okay, do you want to talk about the chase scene real quick just to get that yes. out of the way? Yes, the chase, scene, the chase scene is, of course, the highlight of the story for me. And fun fact, that chase scene was actually, was actually based on a real-life incident, too. In America, no less. Oh, wait, was it America? Yeah. 
well, at least, uh, well, uh, well, at least, you know, um, uh, well, at least one version of it was, uh, uh, was actually, uh, was actually from America. Um, from what I understand, uh, uh from what I understand, uh, off the top of my head, uh, basically almost the same thing happened in that, like, you know, a diesel engine basically, uh, ran, uh, uh, ran off the line without a, uh, driver refinement. Um, I don't remember if they captured it with another diesel engine or if it was a steam engine, but bait. Uh, but, ba uh, but basically, they almost did, like, you know, the exact same thing as, uh, what the inspector did with, like, you know, trying to catch Jane, and that, like, basically kind of, you know, la uh, lasted all the engines together and such. Uh, so basically what I'm saying, that, like, you know, the inspector wanted to reenact a Wild West movie. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I can't think of anything else to say about the story. Like, this story is awesome. Like, it, it, like the story, the story put it, the story, you know, mm -hmm. is perfect from beginning to end. And, Yeah. I'll I'll let you I'll let you take it away because I'm gonna get my rating right now because I don't have anything else to say. All right, so what's your final rating for uh, this story? I thought about this line hard, and I was gonna give it a nine, but honestly, it's a ten. Alrighty, uh, all right. So I'll let you know your final rating real soon and everything. Um, but for me, yeah, uh, yeah, I will definitely agree that like you know, Old Iron is definitely a really good send off to like the final story of Edward the Blue Wench and everything. Cause like I said, up to you know. This point and everything we've seen Edward, you know, being kind, being wise and such. Uh, ba uh basically, you know, uh, 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 and also basically throughout the whole book, we've seen like you know other engines interacting with Edward. Like you know, in the first story, we had uh, Gort, uh, basically Gort and Henry, you know, bam, uh, bam mouthing Edward and everything, calling him weak and everything. Uh, uh, only, uh, only to find out that like you know they didn't handle the situation any more better than Edward did. Um, in the second story, like you know, we had uh, we basically had Birdie, you know, try uh, uh, trying his best to catch up with Edward and everything. Um, and at the end of the day, like, you know, Bertie uh, shows some kindness to Edward, realizing that, um, what, uh, basically, you know, it wasn't his fault in the end and everything. And then, uh, and then basically, in the la and then basically, you know, the previous story after that, we got to saw just how kind Edward was to Trevor, and, and basically, you know, just saving him in the end, where, where, like I said, you know, he didn't have to do that and such. Uh, so now, basically, when we get to the final story, we, ba we basically kind of have, like, you know, uh, 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 if you think about it, like, uh, we basically kind of have all those three, you know, themes in a story combined into this one story. Uh, uh, we, basically, we basically have James in the first story, basically, like, you know, he's bad-mouthing Edward and everything, you know, calling him old, calling him unreliable and everything, to where uh, to where Thomas and Percy stands up to him and everything, saying that, like, you know, he's out old and such, he could beat you in a race any day. And then, ba uh, and then basically, once we get to the chase scene, like, you know, again, it uh, kind of ties into uh, how Bertie had to deal with, like, you know, chasing Edward and everything in the second story. And then, ba uh, uh, and, uh, and then basically, you know, once, uh, once you know, Jay uh, once uh, Edward has Jay... Uh, save James in the end as well too. James realized just how kind Edward was to him, even though that like you know he was being you know he was being rude to him in the beginning. Basically, Edward put that inside and just basically you know uh, sa uh, saved his friend in the end as well too, and basically even made a uh, made a little light joke about like you and know, ja and James and James missed him as well when he went to the works like pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty much and such too. So like you know that doesn't tell you how much James now respects Edward after saving him and everything. We don't know what will and actually you know that ending again despite like you know the wall being seen and everything. Um, uh, actually you know that ending. I do agree with like you know the railway series book club. I really wish the TV series would have found a way to you know keep uh, you know kept that ending in the TV series version as well too. Yeah, because, uh, like, actually, and Willie Rushton's narration at the very end after the after he finishes with the fat controller thinks he'll be dead for weeks. Uh huh. Th the whistling sounds at the very end. Yeah, it it, it really does. I mean, like you know that ending really does cap off a really good happy ending and everything to like to that book overall and uh, uh, uh and you know what like you know yeah and yeah like you said you know that chase was pretty epic um uh now granted i do prefer the tv series a little bit more on a chasing just because of more like you know visual wise and such uh but they definitely gave you know dolby credit and everything like you know um again he did like you know a decent job on uh, trying to illustrate you know the action that was going on in that chase scene so well and everything that like I, 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 I like, I like basically, you know, when you read the line about, like, you know, what the inspector was doing and everything. Uh, I, uh, again, uh, again, like, you know, you just had the edge of your seat and hoping that, like, you know, he uh, he finally catches James. And when, he, uh, and when he finally does, you basically breathe a sigh of relief, you know, along with the inspector and everyone else on. Uh, basically, everyone else that, you know, uh, uh, that was involved in this action. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, I was going to say about uh, about the narrators. I think Willie Rushton did a better job than Johnny Morrison yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, yeah, I definitely there was do agree no, with you on that. There. there was no energy. There was no energy from Morris in this in this one. I'm sorry. Yeah, I definitely do agree with you on there. What should I do? I can't stop. Help! Help! <laughs> I, that's why I love Willie Rushton. He demolishes every narrator, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, I do agree with you on there and everything. 
Um, you know, you know, uh, you know what? Uh, like, you know, after reading like you know, uh, this book with like you know Darty Morris's narration, especially like um, with the last two stories, I'm really curious on how I'm gonna feel about him once we get to the, like you know the last two books with him and everything. So, I'm, de I'm definitely kind of looking forward just to like you know hear his narration and see like you know, uh, maybe start any better or any worse and such. So, uh, spoiler alert from in my in my side, he gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> yep. All right, so for me and all, hmm, you know, like you, I was also gonna give the story a nine as well too, just more for like you know, uh, cause like you, uh, uh, cause basically like you know, I grew up with the TV series version of this more, but the more I think about it, in a way, how the story was structured, you're right, like you know, it actually does you know uh, provide a really good ending to this book overall. So you know what, I'm also gonna give it a ten. Why not? I uh, uh, why not? I think this book actually deserves it. It deserves that Yay. ten. Yay, um, awesome. Alrighty, so now we move to final ratings. So who wants to go first on their final ratings for this book? I'll go first. Uh, let me calculate it with my uh, calculator. No, no, don't worry. I got the calculator up there ready for you. Alright. Okay. So uh, so I know. So Alright, so Cows, you gave it a 6. Birdie's Chase, yes, you gave correct. it an 8. Correct. And uh, Save from Scrab, you gave a 9. Correct. And Orlion, you gave a 10. Correct. So, so it's a your 33. final score is a 33 out of 40. So taking that, uh, your overall grade for Edward eight out of the 10. Blue Engine is actually a B minus. Wow. Yeah. So you kind of wow. liking this book a lot more than you thought. Yeah, I was actually expecting it to be a C. But uh, okay. when uh, behind a uh, little behind the scenes, guys, uh, before we start recording this episode yesterday, uh, I mean today. Um, my, my my, I was expecting it to be a C, but a B minus. That's that's just that's actually better than I than I thought. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Because basically, before we started recording, we both uh, we both basically gave our like you know prototype ratings on like you know how uh, what we thought the stories were gonna end up getting as such and everything. Yes, um, correct. And, and, and actually, I think my grade might actually be a little better. So, do you want to go to my ratings uh, real quick before we give our final thoughts? Yes. Uh, one more thing, I'm gonna mention, uh, okay. guys. There's gonna be a new update for the ratings. Uh, so just so you can keep this in mind. Uh, right. We're no longer we're no longer going to score them, you know, like we did before, like eight point five, six point five. Now we're gonna round the number. So basically, if it's lower than than a five, then it's an eight out of ten, for example. But if right. it's higher than a, if it's five or higher, then we're gonna round it up to a nine. So basically, if a book gets an eight point two, uh, we're gonna put it as an eight. But if it's eight point five up, then it's a nine. Basically like that. So right. so we so, so we don't get people confused. All right. Alright, uh, right. so in terms of my rating, I gave, alright, so I gave, uh, the first, I know I gave Cows an 8, I also gave, um, Birdie's Chase an 8, I gave, uh, Save from Scrap a 9, and I also gave Old Iron a 10. So, my rating is a 35, uh, out of 40, so with that, my story is actually a B plus, very close to an A, actually. Yeah, and yours is a 9 out of 10. Pretty much, so... Yeah, so yeah, that was also a big surprise for me. I was also ready to, like, to be fair, like, you know, uh, when we get into my prototype rating, it was close to getting a C+, which, uh, which still wasn't bad um, overall and everything. Uh, but no, like, uh, once we got to, like, you know, the final, uh, basically, like, you know, it was kind of like, you know, uh, uh, what always happens, like, you know, on these podcasts and everything. Uh, we, uh, we think we're going to give this book a certain grade and everything, but then once we start talking about the books and the stories and everything, it ended up being a different grade than before, and in terms of Edward the Blue Engine, it actually got a grade a lot more better than what we thought. Like, we both ended up giving it a B in, uh, uh, in a sort of way. And you know yeah. what more I think about it and everything? I think the book actually does deserve a solid B and such, because, like, like, cause like, yeah, the stories are simple and such, but uh, but as we always say, simple doesn't always have to mean bad. Uh, you, know, you, know, uh, you know, a simple story from a book and everything can still be very good. It just depends on, like, it, it just really depends on how you handle that sympathy really well in terms of themes and the characters around that set story and everything. And I, and I think it's fair to say that uh, Wilbur Audrey actually really nailed, like, you know, most of the themes, like, you know, in the four stories right out of the park in this book. I agree. Though, though I will say that, uh... It, the the TV ver the TV up the TV series did did a much better job in you know working the stories because uh, the book versions you know they were missing the 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 frosting in my opinion pretty, some uh, of them pretty much I do definitely see where you're coming from yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah the TV series dev uh, definitely did also upgrade a couple stuff in terms of like you know visual wise and everything like I said like you know with old iron with the chase scene uh, or basically like you know with Barry's chase also with the chase scene as well too and everything. Uh, but there were, uh, but there were also some moments where, I, uh, well, I will admit, I think I also do prefer the book version over like the TV series. Again, like going to like you know the ending and uh, old iron from the book compared to the TV series, 
um, as well as uh, the visuals from Save from Scrap as well too. So, so, uh, so basically, both versions did have their pros and cons in the end. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, I will say this: this is not um, uh, comparing it with the other books that we're gonna be talking about in this season of the podcast. I don't think this book will be will be near the top or 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 the middle. I think it will be my least favorite of the of the whole series because I'll be honest with you guys, this is one of those books where I have to be in the correct mood to, yeah. to read uh, it. I definitely do agree where where you're coming from with this. Uh, definitely no doubt. Like if I was to think on this book a little bit more before we get to the tier list, it's very possible that either I might put it either in C or B tier to be honest and everything. So. But, uh, but like uh, but like I said, uh, we still got a couple more books to go before we get to the tier list itself and everything. I don't think, uh, uh, now, uh, now at least in terms of me, I don't think this book is going to end up being one of the weakest. If anything, it might just be more fall into like the uh, slightly above okay category to where like, you know, it's still good. But uh, but uh, but me personally, I don't know if I want to read it all that much. Yes, I fall into that category. It's not that it's bad, it's just that there's much more better books than than, than it. And, the sto- and some of the stories are kind of, are a little bit... Kind of drag on a little bit, but mm. at the same time, you know they're missing the the frosting that made the TV the TV series version great. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which yeah, some people, which some people, uh, which I some people, we understand where you're coming from with that one. Which some people might say is an unfair criticism if you think about it. But, uh, but, but, I, mean, like, uh, but I mean, like at the end of the day, like I said, you know, we just got to be honest about like you know where we're coming from and like you know why uh, why we think this way to begin with. Yeah, bas- yeah, basically, and and remember, guys, uh, we we mostly grew up with the TV TV series. We didn't we didn't uh, actually read the Railway series till years later. Yeah, yeah, pretty much same here. And um, I think I think this is also a good time to mention that, like, you know, in this season, we're really gonna start seeing a lot of different you know changes from like you know the book version to the TV series version. And that's gonna be even more true once we get to the next book itself. Especially when we get to season three. Pretty much, um, yeah. Yeah, cause man. There's a couple of books that I would have loved to see the TV the TV series adapt, but unfortunately that never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, in some cases, uh, basically in some cases, there's also some stories as well too that probably should have tried to kept to the original story or at least to the original source material. But to be fair, I'm probably going a little bit too far ahead because, like I said, at least in terms of me, I haven't read some of these stories in a long time. So, like you know, I'd rather keep my opinion to myself until basically we get to the stories and maybe even after watching like you know the TV series version of it. I've I've read pretty much I've read pretty much every single railway series book except number forty. Number forty is the only one where I haven't where I I just can't finish it. <laughs> oh. But that's another story for season six. So yeah, guys, that was Edward the Blue Engine. Uh, for the first episode of season two, this was this was great. I will admit, this was really this was really great. It was it was it was definitely great. It was definitely really fun. Um. Uh, uh, there's kind of the opposite problem where we had with like you know Gordon the Big Engine, where like you know we were ready to get we were ready to praise the book. All, uh, 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 we're basically you know in that book we were ready to, uh, we were ready to praise it and everything, but then it started to student reading the stories. We were just like, you failed us. We thought you were good. <laughs> and, and then and then, uh, and, then ba- uh, 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 and then basically once we get to Edward the Blue Engine, like both of us were kind of ready to uh, call this book okay and everything, but then like you know once we started reading the stories, we're just like you know what, and we're just like you know what Edward. You're not bad. You're actually pretty good. Uh, we're we're, we're kind of uh, we're also kind of sorry for bad mouth. You, you, you know what? You know what? Yeah, when you kind of think about it, we were kind of Gordon and James, you know, uh, coming into this book. It's like you know we were all getting ready to bad mouth Edward and everything. But then as soon as we started reading this story, we were just like, we are so sorry, old. We were so sorry, old grandpa. We're, we're so sorry. We're so sorry, you king. We're so sorry. <laughs> we're, we're so sorry. You done no wrong. Ha- 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 hashtag Edward did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I find it kind of hilarious. I find it kind of. Do you know what's funny though? What James, uh, James and Gordon are, are like the two hot shots, and, and their books did, did their their books were bad. Pre- pretty were much, bad. pretty much. And then we got like you know Edward the Blue Engine, who was like you know very kind, very simple, and we were just like you know what, you're okay. You're actually really you're good. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually excited and, to see what we think of, of because uh, I think we've covered Henry, we covered Thomas, we covered James, Gordon, Edward. Pretty but... much, like you know, I, I pretty much, like, I think, like you know, after this book, we pretty much cover like you know, uh, uh, all the main seven engines in this book, you know, uh, fr- uh, from the series so far, except for one, which we're gonna a, get. A, a, yeah, yeah, except for one. Although technically, he's not gonna have his book until like uh, until like the book before it. So until the book that comes later. 
Which yeah. honestly, I th- I have a feeling Sekoa is very excited for next episode. I uh uh uh, uh, uh actually I am yeah uh uh, uh yeah yeah yes actually I am. Uh, for those uh, for those who have seen my channel and everything, I've also seen my season four review and everything. You definitely know what book is coming up next, and yeah, uh, and yeah, uh, and yeah, I am definitely excited to get to that book and such, and definitely you know, I de- I'm definitely excited to offer my uh, uh, definitely excited to offer my thoughts on the stories as well. I I, I agree. I, I'm excited as well for the next book. So yeah, guys, that was Edward the Blue Engine. Uh, yeah, it was a great start to season two. So if you guys enjoyed the very first episode of season two, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you guys want to see more episodes of the podcast, hit that subscribe button as well. Also, don't uh, forget. Uh, oh. Also, don't forget if you guys want to see more, uh, see more of our other stuff on this uh, channel, like uh, like Thomas reviews and other TV show reviews. Uh, like I said, uh, well, like you know, Barney also said, subscribe. And if you guys, uh, yep. if you guys want to see other, uh, if you guys want to see, uh, you know, uh, ba- uh, basically reviews where we do them solo and stuff, so check out our main channels, which the links will be in the description. Yeah, pretty much. Um, there, there might be okay. So the so the podcast episodes might be a little bit delayed for season two because. Uh, I should guys let you. I should let you guys know by by now. My my laptop is starting to have a couple of problems, especially with the battery. Hmm. So so if uh, so if if the, if the podcast episodes get delayed, it's, it's because of my laptop. It's not because you know we're lazy. <laughs> it's because of the god. Uh, uh, well, technically, it's, it's both because of the, uh, of the goddamn technology and because we're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, everybody. This has been Bonnie with Sakura the Diesel. Saying thank you for watching, and we'll be seeing you guys in the next episode of Season 2 of the Really Useful Podcast, where we'll be covering four little engines. Yes. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.